It is time now for our second championship bout of the evening to determine who is the Flow Grappling, who's number one welterweight champion. Coming out of the blue corner, training here in Austin, Texas for Fight Factory, Cody Steele. <laughs> The mayor of Suplex City, Cody Steele, is back. The record of two and two here at Who's Number One. Well, we'll see about who's going to suplex who. We'll see if that plays anything uh, into this match. Out of the red corner, training out of Jindai Sao Paulo for Melky Galvao. He is the Tezos WNO welterweight champion. Let's hear it from Mika Galvao. The current 170 pound champion of who's number one, Mika Galvao, the monster from Manaus is back on the who's number one stage. Yeah, such a versatile uh, player here as well. It's you blink, you miss a submission <laughs> attempt at least. And then uh, he's proven to be so dynamic. I think that's really what Cody Steele is gonna have to be very aware of is that how fast submissions can fly at you from this young man. All right, let's take a look at this welterweight tail of the tape. Cody Steele, 28 years old, 5'9", 170 pounds. Mika Galvao, 20 years old, 5'9", 169.4 pounds. Rank number two on the Flow Grappling rankings. This is for the 170 pound title. Let's go, Mika Galvao versus Cody Steele live here at Who's Number 121. So this is an interesting uh, turn of events. Mika was actually a last minute addition to the card. We originally wanted him with another opponent, but was unable to make that match. Mika almost was not on the card, but we added him in last minute. And uh, looking through who to choose as an opponent, yeah. You know, after seeing Mika suplex <laughs> at the last who's number one, it, it became obvious that uh, Cody Steele was a prime candidate. Cody's got a lot of nice feints going on. Yeah. But like that nice little duck under there by Mika, it's so smooth. And it, the, the really the problem is it's not even just being taken down. It's where do you land when you take each other down? That, that's where our sport is so much different than wrestling. It's it's not just a takedown. It's where you land or wh what you land in, even if you do the takedown. Oh, Beautiful yeah. foot sweep. Sweep to the front, headlock, guillotine as we can go foul. He's got a submission wrapped up and it's been less than two minutes, Sean Williams. Yeah. Look at that guillotine, if, it's on. If he's on that side, now it's really going on here. It's it got on the good side here. He was able to recover nicely. He was on the weak side there for a moment, but he's recovered nice. I'm sure Cody Steele is really used to being stuck in guillotines, but is he used to being stuck in this guillotine? Mika Galvão rolling with the guillotine once again. He's got the legs locked up, and that's a trouble for, for Cody. He's got to get his hips free. He's got to walk the legs back. Should shake his legs up and down. Should start pumping his knees, and that'll free those legs. Looks like he's so far so good. Mika should start working his legs, could start working his legs and pummeling to the mount here off of this this guillotine. Using that right leg, he's able to get out. The fans going wild here in Austin. This match is living up to the hype. We knew it was going to be action packed again. <laughs> right Look at that beautiful again. front headlock attack by Mika. The timing that he's hitting that on yes. is just is just perfect. Yes, it is very very good. Again, on he's on the guillotine. He'll sit guard. But he's out again. But those wear you out. Guillotines yeah. wear you out. And so, again, very, very nicely done. Again, it's not just the takedown. Gotta, it's what you land in or where you land. 
we, we talk about uh, Cody Steele. He's two and two here at who's number one. But he's actually been focusing a lot on MMA recently. Cody is uh, first place Marianas Open winner. He won EBI Combat Jiu Jitsu. And uh, he's got wins over Philip Rowe and Alec Balding. Mika Galvao has an eight and one record here at who's number one. Wins over Oliver Taza, Andrew Tackett, William Tackett, Jacob Couch, Dante Leon, Jay Rodriguez, PJ Barch, and Alan Sanchez. Mika has just dominated this division. Yeah, and and you know the, the 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 philosophy or the mentality doesn't have to be different. Your strategy doesn't have to be different from MMA and Jiu-Jitsu. I think it's the best strategy: wear someone out and then finish them. But but how you do it is vastly yeah. different, and that's where uh, you know if, does Cody have that? Does he have a way to wear Mika out and submit him? Uh, he's stuck in a crucifix right now, so that's the real thing. Does he have a way to beat Mika? Not just wrestle with him, but can he beat? Can he figure out how to beat him? The, the, the very interesting thing about Mika is, is he can play multiple paces in his matches. He can go very fast, dynamic. He can calmly control. Look at him just calmly getting to the back there, attacking an arm, bringing it back to the feet. Then all of a sudden you'll see him do a high-flying arm bar or something yeah. else. He is just something special. Yeah, he has many tools in his belt to win this contest. So this, Cody's challenge is not only going to be to hang in there, but to, to find the way to win. What's his way to win? I would assume get to the back off of these wrestling exchanges. That was a beautiful sweep, foot sweep. But, but again, look at the recovery from Mika. He's still facing him. He's right in front of him. There's a beautiful foot sweep there by Cody Steele. Doubles to duck under his back, getting to the back. Serve Cody Steele very well. Judges favor. Red. Mickey Galvão gets the first judge's favor. No surprise there. We saw Mika with just some amazing battles in the who's number one. Four man bracket, he did at the last competition, the last event we had yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Was uh, supposed to be facing Andrew Tackett in the finals of that competition, but Andrew sustained an injury. We look forward to having him and Mika down in the future sometime. Kujigari. Cody's dealing with the color ties well. I, I was just going to comment how, look at the stance Mika takes, almost inviting. Well, oh, awesome. look at yeah. that. He needs to turn immediately to the ceiling. To face the ceiling, does Cody Steele's? He's got he's got caught That's in that. That's a very 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 yeah, tight. He's, he's, he's caught. He's caught. Yeah, he is stuck there. If he turns this way, he's gonna get this going on way worse. He uh, could let that go. And he must have felt that it was slipping out. Still looked tight, but I he must have felt that it was slipping. That leg over to the mound here. He's got a Kimura. There's the mount. He goes to the gift wrap. He needs an underhook of that top arm. There it is. There's a nice little pummel on his right side to go to Katagatami. So he's got the gift wrap. He's got Katagatami coming. know he'll take an arm if he's, if he's so inclined, if he feels like he needs to. It's interesting, you see in the corner of uh, Cody Steele, both Tackett brothers, or two of the three Tackett brothers, both of which 
competed against Mika. Yeah. <laughs> so they have the most experience against Mika Galvao, and I'm sure they gave a lot of insight in their training with Cody Steele. See if Mika uses an underhook of the right arm or try or tries to take the back. Nope, he's gonna stay mounted. So he's gonna look to wear Cody Steele out. But that tells me besides he's not chasing the back is he's gonna look to wear Cody Steele out from the mount before he thinks about chasing the back with that chair sit. There's not a lot of pressure when you chair sit. Right now there's a lot of pressure. He's mounted, he can go katagatami, he's got his arm locks. I, I'm, I'm gonna call right here. I, Amika and Tynan have a little bit of history. You know, and uh, what a what a match would be able to see them do it in Nogi someday. Oh, uh, but I have a feeling Mika is going to try to replicate what we saw with Tynan using those double unders and looking to get an armbar from the mount. I'm calling it right now. <laughs> well, I mean, he's 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 solidifying himself in the mount. It's he's going to walk this arm up. Might be using like a Nogi Ezekiel to do so. The one thing that will be a challenge is that Cody Steele, because of that MMA experience, he, well, he knows, but actually put his arm in a really bad spot right there. And that Katagatami now now is coming. Yes. The but man, they're so slippery. Yeah. He's just able to snake his arm out. He's going to do it again and again, though. That's. Now he's locked his hand, so you may see Mika a limp arm out of that just so he doesn't get off balanced. Still walk his arm up, but there's there's the Nogi Ezekiel. I think he looked like he was trying. Sometimes that gets the, yep, yep, he's trying. Just gets the hands up. That Nogi Ezekiel right there. It's the hands up really well, and then you can pummel. See that hand coming into fight, and you can pummel under the elbow. Oh, nice little shuck to the back there. He's trying to strangle from the side right there and that will definitely work if you can keep your your opponent on your side long enough it's it doesn't look like much but it, it will definitely work judges favor red yeah no surprise there mika continuing to dominate cody Steele now with the escape trying to foot sweep mika galvao Slid off there, got too high when Cody turned. You know what I love about this match is both of these guys, big smile on their face. And they're like, come on, man, let's put on a show. Yeah. Let's, let's go for this. Oh, right there back. Catches that front yeah. hand lock again. Yep, yep. That time Cody shook it off. He's going to put himself back in that position again by shooting low like that. There it is! Oh my. And right in, that's tight. That is that is very tight mounted guillotine. Very good position here for Mika. He should have held out. He pops out. Yeah, he must have felt it was slipping. As I locked hands, I believe, are better than the one handed guillotine from the mount. You can really just hold it much longer. Okay, so here's the question if you suplex the mayor <laughs> in his own city, by definition, do you. Does he relinquish his title <laughs> and position in office? And now Mika from Manaus. There's an Oki Ezekiel. Love this strangle. It's a good way to get the hands up. It's a good time to go to the Mount of Crucifix as well. You see Cody's got that hand. When you're walking the elbow up and you got that that hand that pummels in, it opens up that armpit for what would be Mika's left arm to go through. Now he's starting to chase the back a little bit more. So, uh, still staying low on the mount. Three minutes left. Yeah, Melky Galvao saying you got three more minutes to finish him. Let's go for the triangle, he's saying. He might slide around to the back this time, yep. Body triangle in place. Hand fighting. And the one thing about Mika is he's got insane flexibility. So look look at that. As I say that, he, tra he uses those legs to trap the arm. There it is. Yeah. Arm around the neck. Arm trap position. We're looking at a rear naked choke finish here, Sean Williams. Yeah, we are. He's that's, got it under the chin. That's it. And Cody attacks. Mika Galvao gets the submission once again here at Who's Number One. Now, nine in one in who's number one competition. The defending champion. 
an amazing match. Yeah, so good. Just what a what a great display. There's the one-handed rear naked all uh, arm. I only slid it up until he's able to lock his hands. But what a great display of how the guillotine can really change things uh, on the feet. Yeah, really did a great job of util utilizing guillotines in that contest. Yeah, just this match played out pretty much exactly like I thought. Yeah. Maybe not as many suplexes, <laughs> but uh, we saw the suplex. We saw a lot of submission attacks. We saw a beautiful grappling match. Yeah, we did. From both men. Cody did an amazing job here. Uh, you know, props to him, you know, stepping out of MMA training to take on the who's number one champion. Yeah, that's a tough task, man, because MMA is just a little bit different. You've got different methods to do that. The winner by submission in the red corner and still the champion of the welterweight division, Mika Galvao. Mika Galvao retains his title. He's got the Indian jungle music from Manaus playing in the background, a la Melky Galvao request. It's going to get the title belt by fellow Manawara, Shanji Ribeiro, one of the greatest of all time. Gi no Gi, Shanji's done it all. What an honor. Congratulations to this young man. Let's kick it over to Kendall Rusing for a word with our winner. Mika Galvao, successful title defense tonight. We knew that we had a battle of two exciting grapplers. People were calling it the battle for mayor of Suplex City tonight, right? So is this what you expected when you came out and defended your title tonight? Uh, you know, we train, we train to be like that. I think that Cody is uh, an incredible fighter. I knew that since before the match that it would be a tough match. I was uh, 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 thinking that the, that the worst thing would be the hardest part because I've seen him doing like many matches, like 15 minutes straight, just pure action. So I was like, man, I'm glad I was able to stand up there for a while. <laughs> yeah, and he escaped a lot of submissions, right? That was a high paced match. What was going through your mind after he kept escaping some of those deep submission attempts you had? Uh, since, since my uh, 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 previous match with Jay Rod, I was like, kind of like used to someone escaping my submission. I was like, okay, I just gotta tire him out a little bit more. <laughs> but I knew that it would be hard to finish him like in a start of the match. Sometimes it happens, but uh, I came here prepared for 15 minutes of, you know, pure uh, physical and aggressive matches. So yeah, I think that was on my mind already. <laughs> Now, Mika, I got word from our table over here that we have a potential matchup for you on a very exciting February who's number one in Costa Mesa. But I want to hear from you if there are any opponents you have in mind to defend this belt against at that event. Um, so I think that there's someone that I would really love to uh, do a match. I think since 2021, this match has been ongoing, like people calling for it. And I don't see anyone else like better suit for for this title defense than I think Nick Ryan Nikki Ryan just in case you guys didn't hear it the first time now one thing that's also really exciting is that we have him here in the house tonight and we're gonna get to talk to him about this match as well so Nikki what do you say? Is this the match you get to look forward to in February? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm super excited. It's, uh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, obviously, you know, I had a lot of uh, injuries that kept me out of the competition scene, but I'm healthy, I'm getting active again, and uh, I know I'll be ready for it. Awesome. So not only do we get a confirmation, but we're going to get an official face-off. You guys can stand right here. I'm going to get out of your way. Official face-off here for our Who's Number One event in February in Costa Mesa, California. Mika Galvao versus Nikki Ryan. Let's give these guys a round of applause. <laughs> it's finally going to happen. Nikki Ryan versus Mika Galvao. February on Who's Number One coming to Costa Mesa. Look for that match, ladies and gentlemen. Spread the word. One of the greatest matches in Who's Number One history will be going down 